Hello. Hello. <laughs> Yay. We made it. <laughs> we made it. Congratulations. Well done. Congratulations to us. This is a team effort. Yay. Yay. This has been a team effort. Yay. Can you believe it? Finally, finally, finally. Yes. Welcome, yeah. everyone. Welcome to our our party. Yeah, hey. <laughs> uh, here we are, here we are. Unveiled Essence. Documentary. Yeah. So. So. Let's start with you. Woohoo! Hey, Betsy! Song <laughs> of Ascents. Thank you guys for joining us. Hey, Linda! Welcome, everyone. We're so glad you um, decided to join us. Um, what a journey it has been. And um, Mark Marie and I decided just to have a little chat before we um, show you guys this fantastic piece of work um which mainly i should say is all Mart marie i just showed up <laughs> <laughs> she, she did yeah. a phenomenal job like she really okay so let's i think Mart marie let's share a little bit how we ended up um choosing to do this project how how did it happen let's share a little bit of that what do you think yeah you wanna you wanna kick start okay so basically what <laughs> happened mike marie came and visit um and we were just chatting and i was just checking up and like what did she do in south africa before she came to the states and visit the states and so forth and just sharing her background in um, tv and um, production and all those kind of things i was like that's so cool i'm amazed by it so i've been dreaming about doing a short little documentary on my art and my journey in the art and um I was driving down the road and then I'm like, Mud Marie is in my house. Why don't I just ask Mud Marie to help me? <laughs> and um, I walked in and I said, Hey, I, I have this project that I really love for you to help me with to create a little documentary for my art, which is coming soon, guys. It's also happening. We're in the works of that. And then she suggested, Well, why don't we just do one for Unveiled Essence? And then I'm like, okay, let's do it. And that happened like probably what in like a week. <laughs> yeah. So since that conversation, I think in the next few days, we kind of, we knew mixed oils. I was like the cameras and phones and lights and everything. By the way, we haven't used any of that footage. <laughs> but None of that. I think it uh, stirred up something, right? It, it 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 that did stir up something and then what about a week or so i don't know two three weeks later i can't remember we um yeah just sat down and recorded this interview as well as the art interview which is still in the works um well yeah i wouldn't say i call it an interview but this conversation mm -hmm. um really just getting behind the heart of who you are and why why this is so important to you. And I think a big part of this documentary is really an extension. It's really just an expression of who you are. Mm. Um, it is, it is in, in a big way like the art, it is just another expression. It's just an extension of who you are. And I think it will explain a little bit better why the essential oils and the anointing oils is, is also, you, you know, why they are, First of all, so powerful because they carry your frequency, because they carry who you are, um, but also why it is so important for you. So there's there's, there's a lot of power in, in this, and I'm really I'm I'm just blessed beyond words to be a part of this. Well, thank you, my friend. But it's also an expression of you, this documentary, because you played a big part of it, and um, the, you sharing your gift, your expression of creativity, your voice of creativity. Um, and what I love about it is how these two complete different worlds like merged and 
um, we just created this beautiful thing. So what do you think is the biggest takeaway for you from this situation or this journey? Oh my goodness. There's, there's so many I've, I've learned, I've learned a lot about, I think myself, um, you know, and, and a big, because, oh, there's so many things, but because I come from the film industry and I've done work on big productions, I kind of have this idea that everything we need to do have to be big. Mm -hmm. And um, this kind of brought it down to, you know what? It doesn't have to be big. It just has to be authentic. Come on, yeah. And I think between you and me, there's an authenticity to this that blows my mind. Um, and I have really learned a lot. I, through the process, and we had a quick conversation about it yesterday, but through the process, I had to lay down a lot of my own ideas mm. um, more than once um, in, in just the way that I thought before it has to be and also just kind of dealing with my own ego. Um, so there was, a lot of, there was a lot of that. But then stepping out of it, and I think, once again, some of the conversations we had is just celebrating my own work, celebrating your work, and really honoring myself and you in the process. I think that's some of the biggest takeaways for me is like, you know what, this is me, this is what I do, it might not be perfect, but at least it's authentic. This is this is who I am right now. Um, and um, that for me is, yeah, an incredible, it's been an incredible journey. Exactly, I think that, that the whole point of being authentic, um, and we also had this discussion, you know, if for me on the opposite side with Mike Marie, um, I was thinking like, oh my gosh, if I ask her, like, I need this change, so I don't like this, or can we look at this? Like for me, it was like, I don't wanna like upset my friend. Like, you know, this is like a love journey that we're going on. And it is very authentic because I think in the in the process of doing this you're like you say you face with yourself more than what it is that you're creating this creative process this this um, artwork and I think that if we allow ourselves I was actually thinking about it this morning like my mind is almost living in a space of duality like I know that there's this beauty within me that I love to share with the world. But on the other side, I'm like, who wants to know about you? Like, what makes you so special? Like, what makes you special to even give things? And it's this place that we, we sort of like find ourselves in when we approach these projects, when we approach these things in our hearts that we feel like we want to express. But then the choice comes like, what do we choose now? Do we choose from which voice are we going to manifest from? From which heart are we going to manifest from? And, I, you know, we were talking about that this week. Like, what do you choose? Like, which part of this? Do you, I think we need to have both of them. Um, there was one, one thing um, that was in the... Uh, when we finalized the, the documentary at the end, and I'm like, oh, no, I, I saw something that is a mistake in there and your words came back it's going to keep us humble <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah <laughs> i just love that because <laughs> uh, i just I love that in that space we do realize that this is not about perfection it's about us just being who we are and saying hey guys you know we have something to give you we hope you love it and we hope you get something from it and may you be blessed with it as we were blessed in this thing we were expanded we grew we um we have leveled up we level i was about to say we leveled up even last night doing the live stream this morning mike marie is amazing guys like we were like struggling back and forth how we were going to do this live stream we've never done this right so thank you for your patience thank you for your grace we've never done this but even in that like we leveled up tremendously and i think in that process that's the frequency that we release this with is that there's grace yeah. there's grace for all of us to move into the season in our lives where we go level up level up level up and there's always like we were talking about on thursday there's the space of friction 
you know, that happens when we are in this space, but allowing ourselves to do that is amazing. Mm. Yeah. Well, I just want to say, since I started with this documentary, I started to use the oils um, and engage with the oils. And Tanya said a few times, you need to do a testimony. And I was like, I don't really. And then when I edited, I didn't feel that there was a need for, for a testimony. But since I've used it and since I've started to engage with the frequency of it, <laughs> things are shifting and changing. Um, and that is that is really just um, a testimony to, I was kind of, I can't really tell the story if I'm not engaging in what the story is about. Um, not that it should work that way with all stories that you tell. Um, but I really felt that it was important for me to engage with what she's doing. And um, the frequency on what she's doing with these oils is on a level that I've never experienced before. Um, and I really hope that that comes through in the story that you're telling through this documentary. And I really hope that the frequency and the love that she has and what God has given her comes through um, in the story. Oh. So, yeah. Thank you, my friend. So for everyone yeah. that's present... Uh, we're going to kick this off. It's 12.12. 12. Look at the time. We're going to kick it off, right? So everyone that's here, stay until the end. We have a little gift for you guys at the end for everyone that's live on the call. Um, so we hope you're blessed. Enjoy it. And I love to hear what you guys thought. You know, feedback is important, right? So right, Mark Marie? Yep, indeed, indeed. Okay. Let us Let us know. Oh, there. there you go. All right, but please be patient. Two more seconds while we get this thing going. Thank you for everyone that's joining us. I wanted to take some time today and share with you some of my experiences and why I love Tanya's Unveiled Essence Essential Oils as much as I do. And she introduced herself as living in America, but she's just, she is a South African. I first met Tanya at, at an event. I had seen her online before and seen some of her artwork. And I went over to her table to see what she had on her table and uh, she had oils and perfumes and all these cool things. I met Tanya a few years ago at a conference. The first time I met her was Wow Life to Flow. And then the next conference that I seen her at was The Field. She wanted me to meet this new girl. Um... And, and she only spoke Spanish and Tanya was asking for help. So I helped to translate. And then um, that's how we became friends. I met Tanya at a conference that we both attended. She had a booth set up there. I've always been interested in oils, but felt like I haven't used them to their full potential. I was part of a dance group. And I really felt like I wanted the ladies to experience a fragrance. Didn't have any anointing oil. I didn't know where to get any anointing oil. So I went to the local pharmacy and I purchased rose water. And I'm like, okay, Rose of Sharon, it means something, it's Christ. But I wanted it to be special. I didn't just want it to be rose water. And I think this was my very first time I actually make something. And I can laugh about it now because it was actually pretty silly. I bought about, I would say, a third of a gallon of rose water because there were a lot of ladies. And I went home and I broke all the perfume bottles that I had. And I just started pouring perfume into this fragrance water. And I think the thing is for me, it's about the fragrance and how we wear Christ 
as a fragrance. It's not just that it smells good, but we permeate his fragrance. And I think that was the purpose behind this perfume. I wanted it to be something that we wear, something we feel, something we experience. So I went to this ladies meeting and I started pouring it over them. And we had such an outpouring. We were laughing. We were praying for healing. It was the end of the year. So we were talking about what happened in the year. And when I looked, the floor was soaked. There were puddles of this perfume. And I thought, well, that's pretty amazing. And I walked away with two thirds of the bottle after all the these puddles and I'm like but that's straight quite a bit. we were soaked in it so later on we were ministering as a dance group we were ministering at this church and I decided to take my rose water with <laughs> we were going to bless the people with this fragrance again I started pouring it the church's carpet was soaked but the fragrance just the whole church was filled with it and I think that's what it's about for me is this fragrance that follow us it goes ahead of us and it follows us i gave another liter of that bottle to the pastor's wife and i walked away with like two liters which it just multiplied it just continued to multiply i used it again and i used it again and it's now 2023 and i still have a little bit of that as a reminder of what the Lord did and that the, in the same way the anointing multiplies and it expands and it flows and it becomes a river and so this is my foundation where it all started um, second of all going through something in my own life in 2008 I had this encounter where I was telling a friend about what was going on and then I'm doing this research into the anointing oils and trying to understand what the anointing oils were and she said well I have this little bottle and I don't know what to do with it here you can have it and when I looked at the bottle it was pomegranate and pomegranate represents breakthrough exactly what I needed at that moment this little bottle of breakthrough came to me I knew that transformation takes place from the inside out that's how we transform so and i didn't know what to do with my oil so i would like drop it on my tongue while praying and later on read the instructions do not ingest <laughs> but that's basically how this journey started with the oils that as we transform as we change so we become more like christ and then we become the fragrance and each one of these oils have a specific meaning, a scripture, a prophetic essence to it. And we now step into that space. It doesn't, it, there's no magic to it, but it's acting, activating my faith and saying, if I want to be holy, I activate my faith and step into a position of holiness. I wear holiness. I become holiness. And I think that's what the oils have become for me. As a child, I used to sit in my closet and speak to Jesus. My parents used to look for me and they couldn't find me because I was in this space within this closet. And people talk about going into your closet and praying, but I don't think as a child that was my intention. My intention was actually um, hiding from my family, I suppose. But also there was this intimacy with Christ that I was looking for. I remember sitting in the closet and these fragrances would appear to me. So there's a sense, one of our senses in the spirit is fragrance. Um, a lot of people would say, can you smell that fragrance? And others might not. Christ was a fragrance. For Mary, even when she poured oil onto his feet, the room was permeating with his fragrance. Christ has a fragrance. The gospel has a fragrance. 
Christ and him crucified is the fragrance of love. As a child, there was always this understanding or the search of the oneness of Christ, becoming one with Christ. Even though I might not have understood it at that time, or understood the fullness of it at that time, I think that that's what I was searching for. It was like I wanted to taste him. I wanted to smell him. I wanted to feel him. And the oils is something tangible for us. It's something that the Lord's given us that's tangible. We can smell it. We can wear it. We can ha let it hang in the room, whatever that, for it's like a, a vapor that we can walk into. And I think it's connecting something with my spirit. That's the essence of the spirit. And that's why I think I'm searching for it. And even now, I, I discover new fragrances and new meanings to fragrances. There's like a thousand and fifteen direct and indirect references to plant species, perfumes, incense, fragrance within scripture. So if there's a thousand and fifteen direct and indirect references, there's something special about the fragrance of Christ. And there's revelation that comes out of each fragrance. There's something special about it. Um, so when did the journey start discovering that this is what I want to do? I can't say and pinpoint like, oh, there was an aha moment and this is what I'm going to do. I think it was, it was unfolding in my life. So that ended up in me searching for people in South Africa that were selling anointing oils. And I could only find one person really. And I called her. I said, hey, um, I want to learn. But what I loved about her was that she wasn't giving me word for word on teaching and saying, this means this and this means this. Um, she was like, it's there, go and find it. So it expanded my own growth in the Lord where I needed to say, if you really want to know this, then you're going to have to dive into it. But I knew that, that this was something that I wanted to do. I didn't quite understand why. And sometimes I still ask the question, why? But he is fragrance. Like the cross became a fragrance for us. Healing becomes a fragrance for us. So he is fragrance and he speaks through fragrance. Whether you have an understanding of what myrrh smells like, whether you know that like, I'm walking into someone's hospital room and I have this smell and I don't know what it is, it's him, it's presence. And this connection between fragrances, I think, is what drives me to understand why is it that now I'm smelling myrrh. There's these things that I, I think that the more I seek out the fragrance, the more I discover him. And the more I discover him, the more I discover who I am. And I think if we look at it from that perspective, then anything can be a gateway to him. Anything can become a portal to him. So if I dive through the gate, I discover him on the other side. So it's a language for me. It's a language I use to express myself. It's a language I feel like he expresses himself to me. It's all about him. And then that's how I've grown. That's how I've discovered things and expand things. I asked her what uh, oil would she recommend for me, like, you know, my personality or or what kind of um, energy she was getting off of me or whatever. And she first gave me covenant and redemption. And that it was actually right before a worship service. So she uh, basically kind of anointed me with the covenant and the redemption as I went up to go participate with worship. And um, I loved it. Like it was, um, I could smell it the whole time. Just the experience of smelling it the whole time. It was, it was really good. 
after that, I think I purchased uh, Seven Spirits, Ruach, and Shift. And I had, I was at a different conference and um, this was like a week long conference. And every day before the sessions, I would put on Seven Spirits, Ruach, and Shift. Like I would put uh, Seven Spirits on my forehead or on my wrist and I would put Ruach on my neck and shift like uh, on my stomach even. And um, I found it was, it was keeping me alert. Plus it was, it was making the, the, the scent lock in. And um, so when I would get home and I would like reflect on my notes or reflect on uh, the, the messages or whatever was being taught, um, I found myself every time I would try the oil again, it would kind of remind me of that time frame. So it was, you know, it kind of locked in what we had learned. Um, she also has, uh, her perfumes are amazing. I've tried uh, apple and angel's breath. Very, 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 very nice and refreshing. The frequencies on the oil is very interesting. Like I said earlier, it's something that the Lord's given us that's very tangible. And if we become sensitive to it, we become sensitive to the frequency of the oil as well. So not only did he give us the oil to anoint, to set apart, because that's what anointing means, is to set something apart, to rub in. I can show this little a little bit of this like Bruce Tanyo of the Tanyo Institution. He did a frequency test on the oils and later on he discovered but the measurement was different. And throughout the testing he realized that if his mood was down, the frequency of the oil was down. And if he was up, the frequency of the oil was up. Prayer actually enhanced the frequency of the oil even more. Cedar wood oil, for example, if we take cedar and we anoint someone with cedar, the oxygen bearing molecules within it can actually change someone's DNA at the point of anointing and prayer. And I think part of why people feel better once they are anointed and prayer right over that moment, they feel an upliftment of their body's frequency and if the frequency of the body is higher the body heals itself so it's a natural thing so not only can it heal the body restore emotions help us through anxiety or fear whatever it is that we're going through emotionally there's also the spiritual connection of frequency the spiritual wavelength that he comes through through prayer through contemplation through intention so every time we use this oil with an intention, something takes place. And I think that's becoming magical. That's becoming supernatural. And if we understand that it's as much my part playing in the anointing as what it is the person receiving it, then the oil starts transforming our lives. Then his essence tr transforms us. So the frequency to me is important. I do understand um, the power of the frequencies, especially really knowing Tanya myself and how um, intentional she is and how she really creates from a space of the Lord really speaking to her and inspiring her. I really see it as like her prophetic gifting and then gifting it to us. But I also think it's the person who's using the oils, like it's their role to receive because you can either put on the oils in a, a mindless way and not be that thoughtful, or you can choose to use the oils in a way that are part of your meditation experience and how you want to connect and receive from the Lord in that moment and in that class.
One of my favorite examples from the Bible that I use often would be Mary. And it's one that I think people use all the time because it's just such a well-known passage. But Mary understands something about her pouring out an offering to Christ. And he understood that she understood. No one else in the room understood that. That's why they complained. That's why they criticized. But she had an exchange with Christ at that moment. That perfume, spike nard or pure nard, is usually given to a girl at birth. And she keeps that oil to anoint her groom. And Mary used her perfume as a bride to prepare Christ for his burial. And the scripture says that the fragrance was hanging in the room. And so they were smelling him. She was preparing him as our groom. She was the bride, but she was also preparing him for his burial. When they started criticizing Mary, he stood up and silenced the voices. That transformed her. It must have transformed her. It wasn't just something that she did that she thought, oh, this is expensive. I'm just going to pour it on Jesus' feet. There was an exchange there, bride and groom. One of the oils she helped me pick was shift because I was in a uh, shift in my circumstances in my life right now. Uh, I've been using it. Every time I use it, I feel like I'm connecting with that shift into my life Um the changes that are coming because changes always haven't been easy for me. So um, that that was really good. Uh, I did buy Myrtle. I didn't have a full understanding of that, but one day I was having a, um, a meditation and in that meditation, Myrtle uh, was highly um, emphasized for me. I didn't have like I said, I didn't have the understanding. I reached out to Tanya and she gave me a lot of revelation of what Myrtle what meant and Myrtle coming to me meant. A second example would probably be Ruth at Boaz's feet because she came from the land. Naomi said to go and wash and cleanse yourself. And when he was sleeping, the first thing he recognized was her fragrance. And it's the same even with Esther. The first thing the king recognized was her fragrance. When she entered into the room, he didn't necessarily see her. He smelled her first. And I think, again, it's that thing of we come and we start oozing. We permeate when we understand the oneness that my fragrance is his fragrance. When we understand how we can connect to it, then people start smelling what we carry. The same way we become one with taking communion. And as we take communion, we become one with the body and we become one with the blood oils and communion there's a scripture in revelations that says in the end times three things will remain wheat wine and oil and if we understand the spiritual connection the way we use communion it's not just a cracker and a little bit of wine we're engaging with the christ he said you're eating my flesh you're drinking my blood it's the same way with his anointing. It's the same way with his oil. It's that connection we make with communion and the power that we know communion can have over our lives in the physical, but it's a spiritual thing as much as a physical thing. In the same manner, oil does the same for us. If we place the intention, the faith that we use when taking communion, you'll have the same result. The frequency of Christ in communion becomes the same frequency in the world.
I do believe that there is power in using these anointing oils because it's faith-based and um, we connect spiritually with Papa with the oils. One of the questions that people ask me all the time is, how do I know which oil to take, which oil to buy, which oil is for me in this moment? Part of the fact that each one is connected to scripture and each one is connected to a prophetic meaning, just reading through what they might mean in that moment can connect something for you. The second thing is, Smelling is one of the most powerful connections that we can have in our nervous system when it comes to memory, comes to healing memory or enjoying a memory. So for example, if you have cinnamon, it's going to remind you of grandma's kitchen. So in that moment, whatever is being triggered, whether happy, good, spiritual, whatever is triggered, that's how we start flowing with it. Because Holy Spirit uses the oil to bring something to us. She's already declared it and she's named it. So when I put it on with my intention, I'm coming in agreement, just like kind of you would with a prayer, agreeing with someone else. So I'm agreeing with it with my intention that that's what it's going to be used for. Uh, plus, I don't, uh, she's done all the science part of it behind the scenes of what plant does what for, uh, you know, the blend. But when I use the oils, uh, like say if I'm studying something or if I'm, I'm, I'm listening to something or whatever. And then, uh, you know, a few days later, I'm, I'm reviewing or reflecting and I, I put the oil back on. It, it comes back on my memory. You know, I think you know, perfumes kind of do that too. Like in a, in a different time frame, you can remember something from years ago. Well, the oils are kind of doing that same thing. Uh, it kind of just locks in whatever you're doing. I don't, I don't know all the neuroscience behind it, but I'm sure there, there is some neuroscience behind that. I often had people say to me, um, I want this oil for my husband. He's probably going through something and I need him to change. Right? I always say to them, sure, you can have whichever oil, but you have to remember that the oil touches your hands first. And when it touches your hands first, the work starts with you. For someone that's never had an encounter with oil, I would say, read through all the examples, read through all the prophetic things. There's a lot of teaching on my website, on my YouTube channel. Start listening to it, become familiar with the oils, with their meaning, with the prophetic intent behind them. And as you become familiar with it, you start placing intention behind it. And you receive it like that because it's through faith. It's through faith that we use it. It's through faith that we participate in it. Then experiment. If you open your heart to something and you honor something, then through honor, you will receive something. I, I seriously have a huge box that I bring when I teach my meditation classes and all the women really enjoy like putting on, they love like looking at the names of the oils and just reading the scripture that's attached to each oil and whatever they're feeling or like needing encouragement for that day, they usually will pick an oil um in relationship to uh, what is like speaking to them and um, they enjoy putting them on before the class starts the scripture says that god is in everything therefore his essence is in everything essential oil one of the other things for it is called the essence or the blood or the life of a plant it's the life force of a plant so within this frequency is his essence there's spirit behind it um there's intention behind it we can we can use angels in a good way or in a bad way it's through the intention of our heart it's through how we perceive him and what we want to bring across that the essence flows through us because i'm one with him 
So in me, as I touch the oil, as I anoint someone, it's his essence that flows through it. So there's a physical essence, the life force of the plant, which he created, which he is in. But then there's also me connecting to not only the plant's life force, but Christ in me that now becomes the life force. And that connects to whatever it is, the intention that you're doing. I can give you this example. I had a friend that was diagnosed with cancer uh, many years ago. She passed away three years after her diagnosis. But they, she had stomach cancer. So she believed in God, but she wasn't a church going person. She wasn't engaging with him. She wasn't, there's no relationship. I decided to take my rose oil, which rose oil has the highest frequency of the most of the oils or all the oils. And I took the rose oil before I gave it to her, I prayed over it. I asked the Lord that the connection wouldn't necessarily just be her healing, but that she would find him. Whether she's healed or not healed from cancer, that he knows her heart and that he would penetrate and speak to her. This rose oil that I had was actually a blend. She kept coming back saying, what is in this oil? Because every time I use it, I feel at peace. I feel calm and I need to use it. If, I'm out, if I don't use it, I feel I'm not using it. And I explained to her the essence of Christ behind the oil, that he is the rose, that he is the groom, that she is finding him every time she uses it. And she found him in ways in three years that she couldn't find in the church in the 40 years. The essence of him is in everything, whether it is essential oils, olive oil, baby oil, his essence is in it. And if we connect with that through the Christ inside of us, then it exponentially grows and expands. And whoever we touch after that, they encounter him. Come away with me. What more beautiful thing, what more beautiful essence is there to step into at night than come away with me, my love, than to come away with the Father as you're going into that dream state. I just absolutely love um, that thought and that presence to come away with him. So I can't say enough about the intentionality and the heart of Unveiled Essence. I love what she has created. I love what Father has gifted her with and how she's using that gifting to help all of us level up and step into these essences. Unveiled Essence is just amazing. I absolutely love it. Unveiled Essence, how did that come about? I was looking for a website. <laughs> Again, with intention, God just worked through that. In 2019, I decided to open up a business and start selling the anointing oils. And we all know finding the name for a website is really difficult. I knew what I wanted it to mean. I wanted the name to mean something where we are unveiled, where we find and discover the truth and the mysteries and the secrets behind the oils. So... I kept envisioning walking through a veil and coming on to the other side. So I literally scanned through domain names and I found Unveiled Essence. And I'm like, that sounds good. We're going to go with it. I had a Magnolia as my emblem, as my logo. I use a lot of Hebrew references within the oils. I even mix the oils according to the numerical value of the name that it appears in Hebrew. So there's a numerical count, if you will, within the blends of the oils. Looking at the magnolia in Hebrew is the same word used for bride. And the numerical value word bride is the same numerical value for groom and Rose of Sharon. So even just using a magnolia that referred back to the bride, 
And that's why I also created Magnolia Rose Perfume. I also created Beloved and Come Away With Me with all of them having Magnolia and Rose within the perfume blend. And I think that's the thing with these oils is that we start walking in something that we don't always have the understanding for and it unfolds in our lives. And that's what I love about it is that I feel my life is an unfolding as I study the oils. Unveiled is that the scripture in Corinthians that says with unveiled face, we come before him. And even in my own life, I had to unveil some things to come face to face with my inner demons and my brokenness and my traumas. And I had to say, this is my essence. This is part of who I am. And be willing to place that fragrance like Mary, place that fragrance at his feet and let him change it into a sweet fragrance. And it becomes his essence. So if we open up our hearts and say, this is who I am, this is how I come to you, then the mysteries that are hidden within our trauma, the light can now shine upon it. And it reveals the beauty of Christ. It becomes the glory. So if we grasp a hold of it, we now become the glory. We now become the fragrance. We now become the essence. And that's what we now give to those around us. It's Him. It's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that lives inside me. But it also feels like it's unveiling Him. It does. Un yeah. Unveiled essence absolutely unveils Him. It's, not, it's a two-way street. You know, it's a two-way portal. You know, we go in and out through the door. The more I go into the door of the oils, I find Him in there, the mystery of Christ in it. But I find myself in the same process. Now I have a choice in which fragrance I want to walk in. Do I want to walk in the fragrance of hurt, trauma, pain, whatever I've gone through in my life? Or do I choose to accept a new fragrance, which is Him, which is me, because we are one. I want to use them every single day. I once read where David said he sanctifies and anoints himself daily before the Lord. And I do feel there is a deep spiritual connection in anointing yourself um, as we would anoint other people. Um, we should anoint ourselves as well. So I started with the divine covering. I've had specific encounters with the divine covering where I went through a season where I literally went into the spirit and in the spirit physically anointed each of our family members and um, commanded covering over them when they move around. And um, that specific day, my husband was in a motorcycle accident and when I arrived at the scene and he explained to me what happened, I was just standing there like, but how can it be, stupid me, how can it be that you don't have like one scratch on you? Um, you should have at least broken a bone, had a scratch, ended up in ICU. And he just stood up and it, there was like nothing, maybe a bit of muscle ache the next day. And that was it. And then afterwards I realized that that specific morning, I was um, intentionally praying for divine covering for his safety. Let's talk about myrrh for a second. The word myrrh is mar in Hebrew, which means bitter. The prophetic meaning is bitter, sweet, but valuable. It refers back to crucifying our flesh. Now, no, when I tell people that, they don't want to pick up myrrh. They don't want to buy myrrh. But there's something powerful about understanding what Christ did when he sacrificed the flesh. And he received myrrh both at his birth and at, his, at the cross and also at his burial. Myrrh is one of the strongest healing oils that you can use. The frequency is really high, high on myrrh, but it's a really good, mild. Christ was 
given 40 liters of myrrh Nicodemus gave for his burial. If you had to anoint yourself with myrrh oil and rub it all over your skin, you would be dead the next day. So I always say if the cross didn't kill him, the 40 liters of myrrh would have. Because again, it represents dying to the flesh, the flesh dying where the spirit can be awakened and raised up. He was given myrrh and wine on the cross because it worked like a sedative. It would have taken away some of his pain. And he refused. He didn't take it because he was experiencing everything in the flesh. And so many of us actually run away from it. When we have to experience everything within our flesh, within our trauma, within our pain, we want to numb it. Give me something that I don't have to feel this. But Christ chose to go through it. And that's a redemptive quality for us. So myrrh is a really powerful oil to use. It's one of my favorites to use. Frankincense um, is the Hebrew word lebona, which means white. Um, and it's connected to prayer. It's the purity of the heart. So with what intention are we praying? So it's a whiteness. It's a light that comes and flows from the heart as we pray. Frankincense also works really well on our pineal glands. There's studies that have shown that it can decalcify your pineal gland. And if we look at the pineal gland, it's part of our what well, part of the glands that work with the circadian rhythms. It helps with our serotonin and melatonin levels. So where we go to sleep, where we wake up, and when light hits our eyes, the pineal wakes up. And in the same way, we use the pineal to encounter the spiritual realm. Kasha means humbleness. Sinna means holiness. Both of these oils are mixed into the Holy of Holy anointing oil. Humbleness, holiness. It also has antiviral, antispasmostic, anti... All the antis that you can think of are in the oils. Antiseptic because they were cleaning the temple after sacrifices. The blood would have drawn flies. They needed the oil to cleanse and purify the temple again. So there was a practical thing that the Lord gave them with the oil. It wasn't just spiritual. There was practicality to it. So when I met Tanya, I was telling her about I have a bladder pain. Um, it's a diagnosis that I was given that the doctors don't know how to cure. The lining of the bladder has left. And I was talking to her about, you know, if you've ever had a bladder infection, you know, the severe pain that you feel. And so I know the body will heal itself. And I know sometimes it takes a little assistance with that. And I asked her, is there anything that she knew that I could use with the different essential oils that would be beneficial? I've got a, a inflammation, a, a bladder pain relief and a an anti-inflammatory mix. I use them. Uh, I guess I'm supposed to either put them in my diffuser to help me meditate or I've actually diluted them a little bit with some java oil. So I actually take them to work. I will roll them on my, my neck, my wrist, because I've noticed with the bladder pain, as long as I can stay at peace, then it doesn't bother as bad. It's really beneficial. I have noticed um, since I got my oils that I'm not taking AZO as often as I was. And I'm actually able to to be functional. I'm not um, as irritable. I really have had great success as far as with the oils. I even rub some on my abdomen. <laughs> even in scripture, we see how the oils and prayer and worship was used to heal the people. And in the same manner, we can use the oils in, in, for our lives or for those that are around us. I had asked her about uh, if she knew of, of an oil um, because I had a need and uh, it had to do with grace. Um, I was just, I was praying. It was uh, my time of praying and prayer. And then as the uh, God was speaking to me, I saw myself and I in, in search for, uh, I think we spoke about grace 
uh, Tanja and I, when I told her about this and I said, what oils would be good for this? And, and I have it now. And every time that I, I feel like I'm one being part of myself or, or that I just feel like I need to give myself that grace because that's what it was about. I, I put it on. How do I blend my oils? Um, there's two ways. Um, I have certain blends. There's single oils. The single oils is mainly just frankincense, myrrh, cinnamon, whatever. There's about 25, I think, of those. And then I use those single blends and I create a prophetic anointing oil. I'm very intentional in how I use them. Do I just use them because they smell good? Yes, but I will also use them uh, in meditation when I know that I need to transition and shift or at night I will spray it over my bed or over my pillow for come away with me and I have seen amazing results because of the way that she has intentionally layered them the the different um, oils and the different compounds that she has received downloads from heaven and intentionally put into these compounds um, you know, Father has just gifted her with such an incredible knowing and incredible downloads from him on how to create these elements and these compounds. And then even the names, I mean, come on, shift and come away with me. What more beautiful thing, what more beautiful essence. Some of them that I have, Ruach, Shift, Redemption, we have the Oil of Joy, we have divine nature, we have covenant, and then also the perfumes, the perfumes also created from these prophetic single oils. And the way I do that, I'll start with the very first blend I created because it's my favorite. It was my first one. It's called Ruach, which is spirit or breath or essence again. So how I do this is in Ruach, we have almond, rose, pomegranate, fig, and myrrh. Almond represents awakening of the watchman. The menorahs were created with almond blossom. So their little cup was an almond blossom. So it, the menorah, the fire is held by this almond. We become the carrier of the fire. We become the carrier of the light. Rose represents beauty and abundance. Fig is a surety that the season has changed. Fig tree bears fruit twice in a season. It's the only fruit tree that bears fruit twice. A fig is actually inverted flowers. It's, that's what you're eating. You're eating a bunch of flowers. And it represents that the season has changed because fig trees will not start bearing fruit unless they sure the season has changed to spring where an almond tree actually can start flowering while there's still snow on the ground. It's the first tree that awakens after the snow. The myrrh we spoke about earlier where it's sacrificing the flesh and pomegranate is um, also abundance. So the pomegranate it represents the blood of Christ because of the red color. It also represents the seed because of the many little seeds inside a pomegranate and the priests would wear pomegranates at the bottom of their robe with a bell. So it was a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate and a bell, which means there's a sound of abundance. As we start taking all these oils and we bring it together into this ruach, into the spirit, what we're basically saying is, out of the abundance of the blood of the seed we walk in the beauty of our awakening in the season through the power of our flesh and we become the carriers of the fire because of the almond
she came to South Africa to visit her family, I was able to go and visit her. She blessed me with this bottle. And this bottle is called the Seraphim perfume. I'm wearing the Seraphim that the fire and love. I am close with Christ, but it's an activation in my nervous system to know that I am partaking of the, the crucified Christ. So whenever I use this, I know I'm not alone. I'm part of the winning team. Do you think it is essential for people to use essential oils? I think it is essential for people to use anointing. I think it's essential for us to understand that there is something that happens in our nervous system when we connect something tangible that we can smell, touch, even taste. Just make sure you know which ones. Don't just be like me. So when we take these oils, we can now create our own story. It becomes something you can start feeling, experiencing, encountering. That's what you're going to start carrying. In faith, you step into that spirit. And the spirit manifests. There's a parallel that takes place. So even though you don't have it yet, you're walking in faith. I spray myself, trusting in the spirit that I have that. Because he said you already have it. And now I'm bringing spirit and I'm connecting it to my flesh. And my nervous system connects to the fragrance. And now I start walking it out. So there's this cohesion that takes place. There's this synergy that takes place through spirit and soul and body. There's a frequency to it. There's a mystery to it. And we discover the mysteries. The more we use it, the more we discover mysteries the more it awakens something that's hidden inside of you. It's already there. It just needs an awakening. It just needs an awareness. So I feel that the oils allow us to say, I don't know how to take this thing in the spirit, but I know how to do this in the flesh. And eventually the two come together. Okay, so how do we mix the oils? How do we get to the place of bottling all the essential oils? So I did a lot of research in finding a good company with good quality oils that we import. Um, that was the very first thing. We need to make sure that we have good quality oils. Um, then we sanitize our work surface and we have a little scale. So each oil is measured according to gram so when i start creating the process of the blended oils i would first work out the hebraic and i would work out the numerical values and i would count droplets of the oil within the process of mixing this blend and as i mix them with the count of the drop i would actually get the grammage of how many drops equals how many grammage so um, that's the first thing so each bottle has exactly the same amount of gram per oil in the bottle um, we print our own labels um, i cut my own little boxes for the perfumes and we literally just go one bottle at a time so it's small for now and i believe that we will grow but it's very individual. Um, each bottle is a meditative state for me because it's very repetitive, the way that we drop the oils in. So as I'm working and mixing these oils, I go through prayer, I have worship music or frequency music playing. So every bottle is created with a intention. So when you receive the bottles, you have every intention and prayer set behind it. So when you receive it, you already receive it 
with the frequency of prayer. You're already receiving it with the intention that it was created. And um, so, yeah, we're very meticulous and we try to give you the best quality product that we can. Because we're talking about essence, fragrance and anointing that means to rub in, I started creating different product that will do exactly the same thing as an anointing oil and people can use it in different forms. So the perfume is easier sometimes for people to use a perfume and walk in it than use an anointing oil and sit in their prayer closet. Um, which I feel you should do both. But that's how it started. That's how we started with the perfumes. The body butters, they're basically made from grape seed, which means you graft it into the vine, and mango butter, vitamin E, and then the essential oils. So it's very natural. There's not preservatives or anything in it. We make it in small batches. All of our oils, all of our perfumes are made in small batches so that it's a fresh product every time we send it out. I've been very, very happy, very pleased with the quality of the oils and um, um, the support that you get once you buy them. Thank you very much, Tanya. They're all really wonderful. Honestly, they're all, they're all wonderful. They're all really special and unique. When we greet one another and she hugged, I could feel that anointing fragrance from her. I receive impartation. For me, they are very high frequency. I've tried other oils for many years, but these oils really do have a high frequency. And, um, I just enjoy wearing them. I've received so many testimonies of people, especially through COVID, that used oil, but that testified how without the normal medication, they were still healed because they made use of pure anointing oil. And um, it's because the substance comes from earth, which our Heavenly Father gave to us to use. And I think just that connection with Him, um, that's what makes it so special because it's pure and it comes from me. It's not being tampered with. No, I'm, I'm, I just want to share that I'm really encouraged. I really, I really enjoy Tanya. I like her personality. I like how she deals and how effective she is, how knowledgeable she is, and also how she keeps in touch with you. And, and I really appreciated that. And also that, that I'm encouraged to the process of what, she, with her knowledge and input that she put into the oils that I got from her to where I could go with this as per se in my body. So I'm encouraged and I thank her. I honor her. Now I also have perfumes from Tanya and I, I, and I love them. And my husband says it's really cool because they're so unique. And then I also use my oil. They're very special to me. I, I also love the way, um, I just love the packaging. <laughs> I just love that she puts so much thought into one, the, the the way she mixes it, the way she, um, the package of everything, uh, it just, I don't know. I don't know if I just put a lot of attention to details and I love details, but it just, she's into that too. And I just love it. They are wonderful. They are fresh. They are handmade. My personal goal is to have all of my essential oils be 100% from Unveiled Essence. She has some of the best essential oils.
Congratulations. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm proud of you. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Thank you oh. for so many of you just on here honoring us and being part of this. Um, love you guys so much. All right. So, oh, wow. I really hope that that spoke to so many of you in many different ways and that you guys encountered things. And experience things and that this is just um the beginning the beginning of your journey with the oils so i'm super excited is that lulu joining us that's baby cat i'm sorry <laughs> my cat is saying hi to all of you <laughs> all right guys so thank you for staying here we have a little gift for you mud marie is gonna share the screen please 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 continue to share with us there's a little 20 percent coupon for all of you guys that stayed um this coupon is only going to be valid for today and tomorrow so hop on onto our um, website and go and discover some oil for yourself um there's a phone number there people that are in other countries like south africa and um, I saw Imali was here from Sri Lanka. So if there's anyone on here from a different country, there is my phone number, Unveiled Essence phone number. Um, please connect with me if there's anything that you guys want. I hope that the, the coupon, go and buy some gifts. Um, anointing oil and perfume is one of the best Christmas gifts you guys can give someone. You're giving it with an intention. So... Um, Yep. So I hope you guys can use it and discover something for yourselves. And um, yeah, and then I just want to really, really, really say thank you to Mark Marie. This would not have been possible if it wasn't for her. If she didn't journey with me in this. Um, so amazing, my friend. I love you so very much. Now you're back. All righty. Well, I think that's it. Thank you. Um, Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And then, um, yeah, buy some oils. Buy oils. Any questions <laughs> you guys have, you're welcome to send me messages. Roll. I love you, Mud Marie. Love you all. Love you too. Bye. Bye.